What's up, Internet? My name is Kyle, back with another video about cameras and tech and all that good stuff. Today, we're going to talk about Lightroom Mobile and three tools that I think can really help you make your photos awesome. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you're new here, hi, we make videos about cameras and tech and stuff as you may have just heard. Uh, I was just on vacation. My last video, I told you guys I wasn't gonna be around for a little bit. So if you've stuck around, thank you. Um, without further ado, let's get into the video. So typically I edit photos in Lightroom on my iPad. I also use my iPhone 8. Either way um, is the same thing. I use Lightroom CC, the premium version. So if you're watching this video, you're not gonna be able to use the same features that I use unless you have the premium version, which is $4.99 a month, I believe. Um, go check it out in the app store and you'll find out how much it is. In my opinion, the premium version is well worth the money, but that's obviously up for you to decide yourself. So since I just got back from Canada, I've been editing a lot of photos from the trip. And today we'll go through these three things that I wanna tell you guys looking at some of the photos for my trip. So let's open the app. Here is my Canada album. I didn't name it, I just put emojis for it up in the top left, as you can see. So I'm gonna show you the first tool, which is the healing tool, which is brand new to Lightroom CC Mobile Edition as of this week, um, third week of June, whatever week it is. Um, the version is 3.30. It's the same on the iPad and iPhone. Not sure about Android devices. And uh, yeah, this was never available on the mobile version before until this week. So let's take a look at this photo. This is Lake Louise. I'm literally canoeing on this lake. Super awesome experience if you ever get to do it. Um, the tool is on the right hand side. You can see it's like a little band-aid. And when I tap on that, you can kind of see I went a little crazy on this photo, but I'll show you why in just a second. So those are all of the adjustments that I made with the healing tool. If I hit done in the bottom right here, I go back to the normal uh, picture, which has already been edited. In Lightroom Mobile, you hold down anywhere on the photo and that shows you the original photo right there. Super dark, specks of stuff everywhere. Um, basically what I think happened is my kit lens got up really dirty on the front lens element and then also my sensor had some stuff on it. Um, I, I didn't have my, my cleaning tool, the, you know, the wind blower on the trip, which I thought I brought, didn't. Was super bummed about this. I mean, look at it, it just looks terrible. But anyway, using the healing tool now, it, you can totally revive a picture. I mean, you can kind of tell there's a couple like little imperfections in the sky, but if you're posting to Instagram, it's, it's not that serious of a deal. So let me show you a picture that this tool completely saved, in my opinion. So take a look at these mountains. Beautiful, by the way. You, if you ever have a chance to go to Canada, go. Okay, so top left of the picture, uh, at least I think it's the top left on your side. Well, you'll see in a second. I'm gonna hold down and boom, you see this giant black mark up at the top left corner. Oh my God. I was like, what is that? It ruined the picture. However, as I let go of the screen and show you the edited version, the healing tool completely fix that up there. I probably didn't need to make three adjustments up there. I probably could have just did one. Also, one thing to note is if you're using this tool and you use too big of a size, like there's not that much sky to use. So Lightroom's gonna try and automatically pick another spot to put over that spot. So it's taking a piece of the picture that's already there and then putting it over there. So if you don't have a lot of sky, it may not choose another piece of sky to put on top of your piece of sky that doesn't have the good part. So if I use the tool with the big mark there, it tries to take like a piece of the mountain and some of the sky and fix it. It's just no bueno. So yeah, without the healing tool, this photo I feel like would have been a throwaway just because of that giant dark spot up at the top left. So yeah, super happy with it now. Okay, so another one of my favorite features of the premium mobile version is selective edits. Um, this is something you can do on the desktop version as well. 
You can basically select certain parts of the picture and only edit those. So in this picture, for example, you can select just inside the car mirror and edit what's in there. You can draw on just the sky that's in the mirror and edit that. Um, as you can see, I kind of did it so everything inside the mirror kind of just pops out and everything outside of it, your eye isn't drawn to that part of the image. So it's actually in between the healing and the bottom option over here. So it's the circle with the little dashes around it. So once you hit selective edits, it shows you this screen, which up at the top left, you have your brush, then there's the eraser, uh, the size, the opacity, all that good stuff. So the one diamond on the screen that you see means that I have one selective edit on this screen, which if I double, well, if I tap the diamond again, which would be a second tap, then it shows you the red area, which is where I actually brushed in. Um, what I did with another edit of this photo, actually a different one, which I'll slide over to this one right here. Um, I have a couple. So once I hit selective edits, I have a couple like for this one here, I just colored around, well, they call it paint. I just painted around the mirror and I brought down the blacks and the contrast. I upped the contrast so it was darker. Um, basically to make everything in the mirror, like I said, pop out. Uh, not to draw your eye out to the road or the trees outside of the car. Like why would you wanna look at that? Um, so this allows you to really kind of drill into different things um, that you want to change. Like I can drop the exposure of the mirror and just make it completely black if I want to. Um, here I was editing the sky. Um, you can make the clarity super high for just the sky. Uh, this is what it looks like when it's totally down. It's a little more dreamy looking. So you can really dive in and edit each piece. Uh, you can make the saturation of the sky completely up. So when you have a selective edit there, it's, you're just editing that piece and you can really just, mm, you can get that. Whatever you want, whatever effect you want of the image you can get. I'm gonna bring that back down because that's a little out of control. Actually forget what I had it on, but that looks good to me. So yeah, using selective edits, you can edit certain parts of the picture, get the look you want, and that way when you're using just the normal sliders out here that affect the whole picture, you're not changing everything all at once. Okay, so we did the healing tool and we did selective edits. Third is something that a lot of people use on Instagram is the tone curve. So let's go into this photo. So this one, actually, I really love this image. I just edited this picture right before the video and I was like, holy crap, this is a, a perfect example of the tone curve. So if you go to light and then you go to what looks like a curve right here next to the light to the right, you get this graph. Now it starts out as just a blank line. So what I'm gonna do is each point I put on there, I'm just gonna double tap and it gets rid of them. So there you go, this is the standard line uh, right here. This is how it looks when it starts. So you can place points on the line. Um, I'm not sure the max you can put, it's probably four, no, five. Oh wow, you can put a lot on there. I had no idea you can put that many. The more you know, geez. Okay took those all away. Okay, so you can play with this curve, it seems like, in an infinite amount of ways. Um, the look that I'm talking to you guys about is that faded kind of look. A lot of people use that on Instagram to kind of have moodier pictures or like a gloomier look, um, and this is how you achieve that. So typically when you use the curve, you kind of want to use an S shape. Now for me personally, I like to use like three or four points. I uh, put one down here one near the middle, I kind of space them out um, pretty evenly. So one in the first box and then that second box, third box and fourth box. Um, you can obviously move them around if you need to. And then the first thing for the faded look is bringing up the blacks all the way on the far left. So it's pretty much like your darks on the far left, mid, mid tones in the middle, and then the highlights all the way up at the top of the S curve. So I'm gonna bring that up. I'm gonna probably move that guy over, this guy down. So like I said, kind of kind of like an S, maybe not so much, but that's the general gist of it. Um, and if you tap on the tone curve, it goes away. So as you can see, 
The blacks are more muted. It's just kind of like a moodier look. Uh, this is it completely unedited. As you see, I did take this with my kit lens, so uh, actually, let me make sure I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, as you can see in the top left, I did take it with the kit lens, so I had some of that marks and stuff going on, but um, let me show you. So in the bottom right-hand corner where the car mirror is, I'll show you on the turn curve. This is, I'll show you the point where you don't wanna go with making it moody. So I'll take the bottom left point, and as I move it up, actually I just move it up slightly and you can see it, what I'm gonna talk about here. The black point, I guess you could say, of the shadows and everything just gets out of wonky control. <laughs> it just gets out of control. So at that point is when you kinda wanna tone it down and like right there is where I think things look moody but natural, it's not like too crazy. But if you move it up a little bit, you can see things start to differentiate from each other, and at that point, I, I just, I think that's when it starts to look bad, in my opinion. Um, I'm gonna move it back down about right there, and that's where I think things kind of look natural for the car mirror, but at the same time, the picture's more muted, kind of got those cool vibes going on. I mean, I don't know, I think it's cool, but you may not. So yeah, using the tone curve can give you those faded looks. Uh, I did it on this picture as well. Um, this is the unedited picture, and this is the edited picture. I'll show you real quick. Uh, selective edits, I used it on the mountains here. I, I boosted up their clarity, turned up the contrast, and I turned up the whites just for the snow. And then, yeah, I just made it a moodier look with the, um, let me get out of selective edits. I made it moodier with the curve here. So it's not exactly an S curve here, but I definitely affected the shadows here this is what it looks like with it completely down. And then I just played with the shadows a bit and really upped it there to kind of give it a more flat look, which actually isn't my style, I think. I mean, I don't think I have a style just yet, but uh, I do like the look sometimes. Sometimes I don't. Um, I think it it has its place, in my opinion. But anyway, yeah, so these are, these are the pictures I wanted to talk to you guys about and the tools, selective edits, the healing tool, which is just pure magic. Oh my God, I, I don't know what I would do without that tool. I, I would have threw that photo away is what I would have done. So yeah, guys, that uh, pretty much concludes this video. If these three things helped you, uh, let me know down in the comments or let me know other things in Lightroom Mobile that you would wanna see. Uh, I'm definitely still working on doing a workflow video showing you how I load my pictures in, what I do when I post them, all those different little uh, tidbits. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Thanks for being patient while I was on vacation and I can't wait to make more videos for you guys and uh, I hope these tips helped you today. Thanks for watching guys. I will see you in the next episode. Later. What's, what the, <laughs> Harvey. Ugh. This is producer Harvey and uh, he is a big fan of what we're doing here on the channel. By big, I mean he's getting chunky. Look at these rolls. Look at these rolls. Um, Harvey's not a great photographer because he has no thumbs and he can't take pictures with a camera. But uh, he sure is cute. Mm.